Hello everyone and welcome to round 5 of the FTX Crypto Cup with a game that uh, starts off very very calmly and it seems like nothing is happening. They even described it um, uh, in this manner, uh, sort of, uh, you know, a lot of trading pieces, you know, going into the end game fairly quickly. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, a moment of pure insanity as one of the player describes it, uh, players described it and uh, the entire board just explodes. So let's dive straight into it. It's a, a fairly short game. Uh, but uh, you, you guys will enjoy it, I'm sure. So let's check it out. The dude that has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, and now knight to f3, sort of the antonyms of variation. But still, Magnus goes bishop to b4 check, the so called bogo Indian defense, bishop to d2, and now just bishop captures uh, on d2. a5 is uh, very, very popular here, and also bishop can go back to e7. But Magnus goes for the forcing bishop captures on d2, queen captures and now pawn to d5. We have g3 by Duda, uh, preparing to fianchetto his light square bishop and castle his king to safety. c6, strengthening the center, and now bishop to g2. We have knight b to d7, uh, and now castle. So you can see Magnus has all of his pawns on light squares, and he has a light square bishop. So uh, he will have to figure out a way on how to uh, uh, develop it for it to be the least painful. So d captures on c4, grabbing the pawn. We have pawn to a4, now stopping b five and here Magnus castles. We have pawn to a5, Duda grabs more space on the queen side and now pawn to b5, allowing the a captures on b6 au passant. So a captures and queen captures and now rook to c1. So Magnus for the moment up a pawn but it's a double c pawn with white having this beautiful diagonal all to himself. Also the semi-open a file uh, is uh, th th that's basically compensation in itself. So rook to b8, now putting pressure on the b2 pawn, and now knight to a3, saying you can have your b2 pawn, I'm going to capture on c4, and I'm going to have uh, all of these uh, things that we've already mentioned. So here, bishop to a6 by Magnus, he could grab uh, uh, on b2 right away, but bishop to a6 better, of course, Magnus knows this as he prepared the line. Knight captures on c4, now bishop captures, we have rook captures, and now queen captures on b2, so a huge capture fest, uh, queen captures, rook captures, and now bishop to f1, defending the e2 pawn. We have rook to c8, uh, Magnus has to defend one of these pawns, so you could defend the a7 pawn, you could defend the uh, c6 pawn, and everyone would probably defend the a8 pawn, as it's the outside pass pawn, but uh, Magnus uh, goes for rook to c8 instead. And okay, Duda grabs the a7 pawn, uh, I mean, why not, you already get a rook on the 7th rank, if this rook gets on the 7th rank as well, it could be very ugly for Magnus, pawn to g6, creating uh, a bit of a, a breathing room for the, for the king, and now rook back to c1. We have pawn to h5, and now pawn to e4, Duda saying, okay, you can't really move your knight because your knights are stuck defending each other. Uh, so rook to d8 now defending the knight, preparing knight captures on e4, but now rook captures on c6. Duda says, all right, you can have my e4 pawn, I'm going to grab your c6 pawn. Knight captures on e4 and now rook c to c7. So Duda uh, made this straight to get both of the rooks on the 7th rank. Uh, and uh, now that, that can be extremely, extremely uh, hard to defend. If, if the knight moves, then you capture on f7, then you start delivering checks, then you, you know, just get checkmated. So here, rook captures on f2, Magnus is not without counterplay, and now a beautiful knight to g5 by Duda. Uh, attacking the knight that is defending the rook, and you really don't have a better move than knight captures on g5. This is what Magnus plays, Duda wins the exchange, and now knight to f6. Uh, so for the moment, the knight is defending the f7 pawn, uh, but what if pawn to h4? Well, it's not really a problem. If pawn to h4, you are removing the defender of the uh, of the f7 uh, pawn, but uh, you, we can easily defend it. We can play knight to d5 first, uh, attack the rook, or we can just go knight g to e4 with check, move the knight with check, it's nicely defended, and only after the king attacks the knight, for example, king to f3, we can continue checking, knight to d2 check. Uh, if the king moves, we're going to capture the bishop, for example, king captures, now rook f8, defends the pawn, and uh, even though it's uh, two rooks against the rook and knight, Magnus is up a pawn, white pawn structure is um, uh, shattered, as you can see, Duda has two pawn islands, Magnus would hold this without much uh, much issue. So here, king to e2 instead, and now knight to d5. We have rook to d7, offering a trade of rooks, and Magnus declines, rook to c8, and now with the rook on the open c file, and with the two knights so close to the white king, uh, it could get uh, very, very interesting. So 
here h4 by Duda finally chases away the defender of df7 square and now uh, rook to c2 with check and now you have to be very careful king to d1 or king to e1 doesn't matter what you play uh, ends in checkmate if king e1 we just play knight to f3 check king d1 and knight to e3 will be checkmate so the only move for duda after rook to c2 check is to go after the rook go up the board king to d3 but now magnus just plays knight to b4 with check and this is where the game uh, really starts <laughs> uh, here Magnus uh, really should consider uh, and he said this in an interview after the game rook to c3 check and he just forces a perpetual king e2 rook to c2 check again you cannot go d1 or e1 you get checkmated so you have to go back and here we would see a draw by repetition however after this knight to b4 check move uh, Duda manages to escape with his king he plays king to e3 now Magnus plays rook to c3 check but now king to f4 and now what do you play here the knight here is still hanging on g5 and uh, uh magnus really has to be careful here he played rook to f3 with check as he found a brilliant way how he can checkmate duda's king on g5 the problem for magnus is that this does not work the only way for magnus to play this and it is uh beautiful is knight to f3 now point being that duda would have only one winning move uh, to give you an example if you play something like let's say bishop to e2 you go after the knight uh we can easily uh, play knight captures on d4 and now after uh, let's say rook captures on d4 uh just uh, uh e5 uh this uh, checks the king attacks the rook once you capture on e5 knight to c6 check with a with a beautiful triple triple fork here king e4 knight captures on a7 and this would be a draw or even if you don't want to play rook captures on d4 you could start grabbing on f7 doesn't matter knight to d5 with check king to g5 now rook captures on g3 with check king to h6 incredible as it is black can survive this uh now knight to f5 with check uh only move rook captures on f5 and after this is played g captures on f5 bishop captures on h5 king to f8 as uh you you, you don't want to get checkmated with rook to a8 so we have to play king to f8 now let's say rook to f7 check king to g8 rook to a7 again we would see a draw by repetition so after this knight to f3 remove the only winning move for Duda would be Bishop to g2 and here he would be able to acquire a winning position uh, uh now the knight is hanging let's say knight to d3 with check forces king captures on f3 otherwise the white will get in trouble so king captures knight to c5 check opens up a discovery goes after the rook on d7 king f4 knight captures rook captures on d7 and you get this end game where Duda would be up a full piece Magnus would be up a pawn with perfect play maybe some sort of a fortress is possible but very very unlikely uh so that's uh definitely in the position however uh, like i said after this um uh, king to f4 move magnus did not play knight to f3 he went for the spectacular rook to f3 check move uh giving up the knight here and the duda captures the knight and now you are probably thinking well now okay now he obviously captured the bishop but not really here if he captures the bishop king to h6 and now uh, well, now you can just get checkmated. There's no way to defend this. Whatever you play is it, just checkmate. If knight to c6, trying to help out with the knight, just rook to a8, check. And after you block with the knight, doesn't really matter where. We, we can capture with either rook, and this will now be checkmate. So uh, after king captures on g5, Magnus played king to g7. Beautiful move, preventing Duda's king from infiltrating via king to h6. And now uh, Duda is in a lot of trouble because now Magnus is threatening uh, rook to f5, check. Checkmate. Uh, there is only one move that stops this, and luckily for Duda, it's not a difficult one to spot. Bishop to h3, and now Magnus played knight to d3. And now you can see what Magnus is attempting to do. Magnus wants to play knight to f2, which comes with a tempo on the bishop, and then deliver knight to e4 checkmate. So can Duda stop this? It's not an easy position to solve. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning solution for Duda while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on making your way through this uh, moment of pure insanity. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to g4. Uh, a weird move to make yes but uh, it is the only way to make uh, room for your king uh, you want to capture and free up the g4 square for your king and now what do you play here with Magnus it's uh 
uh, it's a terrible position to be in because if you go for rook captures here, then rook captures on f7 and you get checkmated, king to g8 or whatever, uh, we're just going to play uh, king captures on g6. And now after one more check is given, uh, we're just going to capture that knight, that's the only move and that's it. Now you just get checkmated, uh, the, 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 there's uh, no, no actual way to play this, just rook to g7 check, king h8 and rook to f8 will be checkmate. So that's out of the question. The other thing that Magnus can play and that's probably the thing that he uh, had had planned for uh, is knight to f2 again the threat is knight here checkmate so how can Duda stop this well g captures on h5 again uh, he clears up the g4 square for his king and now this is no checkmate so you have no better move than to capture the bishop here uh, so knight captures on h3 with check king to g4 now attacks the knight uh, and the rook and now knight to g1 now the knight defends the rook and it seems magnus survived this however h captures on g6 now threatening rook captures on f7 so a, a king captures on g6 luckily the f7 pawn is still defended but now duda wins with the very simple h5 check and interestingly this is again the only winning move if you hurry up with something like rook to a1 to put pressure on the knight so you can capture the rook uh, look at this f5 checkmate uh, so it's uh, it's absolutely incredible that Duda was so calm uh, in, in this position to even spot this. So of course he played h5 first, he kicked away the king away from his king, and after Magnus played king to g7, he played rook to a1, and he was in this position on move 38 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. There is no counterplay here, the knight will fall, uh, if you move the knight the rook will fall, so there's no, nothing to play here and um, uh, f5 now is of course impossible as the king is on g7 uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Magnus describes the game as a moment of pure insanity uh, when he played this knight to b4 check move instead of going for rook to c3, a repetition of moves. Uh, but, you know, uh, try to see all of this that Duda found. And it was the only way to win this position. So Duda played it absolutely brilliantly. Uh, and that's uh, why he's one of the strongest players in the world and why he was one of the candidates in the FIDE candidates tournament. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Raymond Raphael, uh, Buntiak Pang, Amar Ashur, uh, Mikhail Sakarias, and uh, Charles Bartholomew for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FTX Crypto Cup uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.